And let's expand the conversation uh, Professor Allen has uh, given us. Maybe try to compare what's going on in River State with uh, Lagos State. But we've since been joined uh, by Mr. Ezenwa Wagu from our Abuja studio. I will say we've been rejoined by him because we had him uh, yesterday as well. He's an era now, and this is a chair partner for electoral reform. Uh, Mr. Wagu, good morning, and thank you for joining us yet again. Uh, good morning. Well, we have re-elected you uh -huh. on this panel. Uh, and I mean, <laughs> no need for an acceptance speech. Anyway, we, we know that you've accepted this. Uh, Lagos, that's the breaking news. And, you know, we're comparing what we saw the last time out uh, in 2019, the, the election result and how we saw things change. But this happened amidst lots of concerns uh, from what happened on election day uh, to the things we saw in the build up to the elections, the divisive rhetorics and, and all of that. Listening to the uh, governor's acceptance speech, seeing the result, cast your mind back to what we saw in the build-up. Uh, how far so far, as they say? Well, I, I think it's it's uh, it's okay that uh, the governor uh, can now have a bragging right, uh, having won uh, the election in a fiercely contested uh, scenario that we saw play out in, in Lagos. But what all of this means is that most people who will be returned uh, from this process will realize that the people matter and that it's going to be costly to uh, take the people for granted. And I think that's coming strong. Uh, the challenge to, to uh, this kind of situation that we've always had where people felt that they were, they could, they are irreplaceable. The whole idea of the unpredictability of this process is what excites me, that you have incumbents who can't beat their chest and say, look, I'm going to have to win this election. That, that political trepidation that, that we have seen in this contest is something that we need to appreciate, that people can't uh, confidently say they are going to win, even when they have done well. They, they, we saw uh, the governor of Lagos State everywhere, meeting the people, talking with them, you know, impressing his personable personality on the populace and, and asking them. That is what we see in other places when there's a contest. So this whole arrogance of power has, has been deflated. And that is something that is exciting for me. So having won the election, the big challenges uh, of governing a, a, a big, big, big state like Lagos confronts him very squarely. And the divisive rhetorics that we saw needs to be quenched now. And one of the ways to do that will be to engage. There, there has to be engagement with the moral and traditional institutions who deployed everything to uh, create the environment that has brought the, the victory that he has. Whether, whether that's some completely immoral, in, in my view, in terms of the way it's been executed. There needs now to be some, some um, you know, firefighting, if, if I may the use of that word. He has to reach out to these institutions, the young people, and the same way he campaigned, the same way he, he went to the churches, the same way he was meeting people at bus stops, at salons, there needs to be that kind of engagement with much more soothing conversation about how to bring everybody together. That, that's what I think uh, should happen, and that is what I look forward to uh, seeing in the coming days. All right, uh, Mr. Wago, I guess uh, let's uh, hope that the governor continues to you know, interface you know, with the people, even though we have uh, re-elected him at this time. But let me come to uh, Mr. Arugundade now. So, you know, looking at how it all played out, you know, in Lagos State, you know, the whole, you know, pocket of violence and uh, voter suppression and all of that, 
Let's take, for instance, now that we had none of that, we had no violence, no voter suppression, do you think we'll still have this result? Well, we'll probably still have the results uh, because, uh, you know, since some parties are claiming that they, they are contesting the results, so we have to be careful, you know, what we say because we don't have, you know, the evidence. Uh, but I, I believe that possibly more people could have come out. There were people who, who, who were afraid, uh, who probably felt that uh, there could be violence, uh, you know, all the threats and so on. Uh, like the governor himself acknowledged, you know, and, you know, by the way, congratulations to him. Oh, yes. And, you know, there were, you know, divisive issues, you know, there were, there were threats, and we cannot say that that didn't have effect on the turnout. There were some areas where there were disruptions. Uh, people said that uh, they could not, you know, vote. Uh, we had some places where it took a lot of effort for them to be able to vote in VGC and extension. Yeah. So it's possible that uh, we might have had probably more votes, even for the governor himself, as we could have had for the other, you know, political parties, because uh, those who stay back out of fear could also be those who probably would have voted, you know, for him. And I, and I think that is one of the, you know, the problems with the kind of narratives that we had, really. And, and for me, uh, you know, the real challenge, really, is, well, you extend hands of uh, fellowship, you know, reconciliation, but there's also what we call, you know, healing of wounds, really. And uh, the, the bigger challenge is that part of these wounds are quite psychological. Not everybody would even express it. Uh, you know, the way they would feel and feel that where we thought, you know, we were all, you know, here together, but look at what has happened. And like I've always said, you see, it's always a minority that creates, you know, all these, you know, problems that throw us the narratives there that probably didn't come, you know, from any. And don't use that attitude of, you know, a minority, maybe after the presidential elections, flaunting, you know, the victory in Lagos, and then the other side, you know, reacting. And suddenly, along the line, you begin to ask yourself, where lies, uh, you know, humanity? Because nobody, you, I, I can't be here and say that somebody from other tribes other than where I was born had not done me, you know, a favor. And we also have to look at the younger generation, you know, the children, uh, you know, products. I, I recall a conversation we were having uh, at our poly units. Uh, during the elections where you know a lawyer friend was saying people that look where we come from is not a choice that we made because you come from where your parents come from so if your parents are yoruba you are yoruba if they are outside you are outside if they are able it, it even sometimes extends to religion until maybe when you get to age and decide i want to have another you know religion so people really come to this world without, you know, any choice. And we need to remind ourselves that uh, sometimes, in fact, in reality, what connects us as a people is much more than what we think, you know, divides us. Yes. And as we speak, we have high level of intermarriages, you know, exactly. across the tribes. You have, you know, young children so today. You are married to an Igbo woman. You are married to an Igbo woman. Yeah. You know, my former neighbor <laughs> somewhere in Nijaye is from, uh, you know, he also lives in Lagos. The wife is Igbo. All the children bear, you know, Yoruba. I, I, it should not be good for those children to grow up with fear that because, you know, my... And if you don't check this narrative now, it could also extend to... People would even say that, well, even if you marry from another tribe, then you are no longer, you know, qualified. So they, they definitely, like I said, you could have had, you know, excesses of uh, reactions. But these are the things that needs, you know, to be managed. Because at the end of the day, I do not think any group could actually exist, you know, in isolation. There will always be what we need. And what drives people to Lagos is what the governor captured. The fact that, and he said it at the beginning of his speech, Lagos is a commercial nerve center of Nigeria. Lagos is a federal, you know, capital. All those things mean that Lagos would always, you know, attract uh, populations to it, looking for different ways of, uh, you know, surviving. And so, investing in that human capital, I think, is also very, very important. Like as I said, this result has shown that what is on the surface may not be what is below and what people really want you know to see so it's good to talk about development and infrastructure but we also have to look at the you know human elements if are those things that really affect the masses you know the more the question of schools the question of hospitals 
and there has to be a proper, you know, sober, you know, reflection after you know all these, you know, celebrations. Uh -huh. uh, for, you know, for to look at. Uh, you can land on that point. Sorry. Yeah, so, yeah. So it's proper sober reflection to really look at where were we? Yeah. Where should we be? You know, where did things you know really you know go wrong? And begin to have those kind of you know messages that you know reconnect you know with the people. Because like I said, you really have a lot of you know healing you know okay. to do, and some because of these I, things may I really also, take a long time. I also so, hope so, but, yeah. um, such narratives, you know, like we heard, you know, like saying that um, this person if, if if, exactly allowing you do business. If, if, you if know, I, the, the, the point really is, that. even if we didn't have all that, we probably still have you know had these you know results really because there were neutrals, there were people who just we look at the governor and say, well, I have people say, I think he's a gentleman, I would, you know, I would vote for him. So you ask yourself, was it worth all those, you know, things that, that we saw? We must be able to live above, you know, primordial, you know, uh, you know sentiments because those yeah. things really affect the good narratives that should be coming out of, you know, political, you know, uh, contests. Let of me course. bring, um, uh, uh, pardon me, I, I want to bring <laughs> Mr. Wagu into this conversation because I, I think it's important to also drive on that point you're trying to make. And for people who are, who are listening, who have gone through this whole period and they're wondering, so what happens after this? Uh, because for some people it was win or win. They did, probably didn't see the possibility of, okay, my candidate would lose and I'll have to go back to maybe my place of work, my place of business, and you know, some of those relationships that I have uh, hurt or harmed, I'll have to find a way to keep living with them. So uh, for some people, they, they, they were saying, this is just politics, so don't take it too hard, okay? Don't take it too serious. This is just some political rhetoric. But not everybody is able to differentiate uh, between, you know, the reality and what a governor has called political gunshot. I think it's uh, Governor Kerry Dulu that said some of these pronouncements are just political gunshots. gunshots. Don't, don't take it seriously. <laughs> so how can we help people to really see through all of this rhetoric political as gunshots. what they really are rather than take them to heart and begin to leave them out in because the, they have four years again under this administration. So how do they go about life? Well, uh, whatever, if it's, a, if it's a political gunshot, it, <laughs> it, has, it has damaging effects on the psyche of, of the people. Uh, it's important that politicians learn to uh, become leaders, uh, you know, leave themselves above those kind of uh, situations where they create an environment that does not represent what they think. But all of these conversations needs to move further to the wider degeneration in terms of our relationships generally across the different sectors. What plays in politics is already what is already deepened in, in the different, and, and for it, I, I keep uh, emphasizing the fact that there is a lot of emphasis on Lagos and how all of this plays because of its very strategic position in, in the country. But you cannot, in many of the universities today, federal universities, you can't be a vice chancellor if you are not from that, the state where that federal university is cited. In fact, uh, Comrade Rogundadi's uh, University had to, it got to a point where we had to see <laughs> fetish objects and all of those things to ensure that somebody from not even just uh, Oshun State now, somebody from, you know, Ife is, is the, all of those things have been playing out. You cannot be vice chancellor of University of Nigeria and Sukha from any other part of the country if you are not from Enugu State. You can't be, you can't be. Federal University of Technology with it, if you are not Igbo. These things need to begin to, we need to put such light on those things because they also have, you know, uh, they spread out into what then plays out when, when we are getting into politics. In, in, in Anambra State, where they could not find um, Muslims and uh, where the preponderance of, of the people there are Christians, they, they, they dug deeper down to whether you are a Catholic or you are an Anglican. 
in many states they are asking in Imo and Abia they are asking Imo indigents who are in the public service in Abia state to go back to their states. These things are, are, are going on. In some parts of the country, the people who are not from that part of the country have the place where they stay. They, 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 they have different cities. The amenities are not taken to those areas. You call them Sabongiri and the rest of them. All of these are the things that play within the wider you know, uh, uh, conversations within our country that we are not dealing with, that we are not engaging. And when it then comes up, when, they are, when, when, they, when we, if the contest for power comes, we, we, we pretend that it is just is a, is a, novel, is a novel thing. If we want to address real questions of citizenship and what that confers on people, those are a wider conversation that we need to put on the agenda as for this election, and it will be very important. Because otherwise, we will wait again, because it's about allocation of resources, about who controls these resources. They, they, if you, they, if professor uh, from River State is about oil resources, is about how, who controls the fierce nature of the contest and the lack of interest in even taking prisoners, you know, has to do with this contestation of space and, and power. And in that situation, power becomes very immoral. So we need to drive a conversation that places the citizen, the quality of the citizenship, the value of the citizen in, in terms of how, how it can be expressed. It, and it's all over the country. It's not just, it's not just uh, within Lagos, you know. Uh, so my, my sense is that we need to drive that conversation as we move forward into creating a modern state where you can feel. And it's not just even a Nigerian thing. At the, at the, at the beginning of the, before the Second World War in, in, in London, people were, the, people, the British were asking non British people to leave Britain that they cannot guarantee their safety. Just to let you know uh, what you're looking at right now, uh, or at least what you've been uh, watching there, that's the Coalition Center in Kano State. And uh, at this point, uh, the results from the local governments, all the 44 of them are in. Uh, they've been tabulated. Uh, but looks like there's a little snag because the returning officer, uh, Mr. Ahmed uh, Doko, asked for, I think, about uh, two to two and a half hours to go uh, look again at those figures and the reports particularly. And he says that he's trying to see, uh, I mean, uh, try to look at the violence that was reported. He said that he's going to try to see which one was willful, uh, which one was just normal violence, such that he will know what treatment uh, to give to it. This battle essentially is really just between the uh, NNPP and the APC. It looks like from the figures that are in already, uh, the NMPP is looking like has more than a million votes, or while the APC has uh, just below 900,000 votes. But uh, because of the cancelled votes and all of that, it looks like the returning officer uh, wants to uh, go look at those figures again. But I know a lot of people might remember what played out uh, in 2019 and uh, maybe cast their minds back uh, and just maybe wonder what is going to happen this time around? So you can see all of the party agents asking questions, trying to be clear, even bringing out the guidelines uh, for the election, saying, well, this is what we see in the guidelines. Uh, you are saying uh, something we don't quite understand. So it's important, again, during the process to ensure proper communication is done, ensure all the stakeholders are perhaps uh, on the same page, or at least some sort of explanation is given. And, uh, just let me come to Mr. Arugundadi here, because we've been monitoring what is going on in Kano State. And I, I, I know a lot of people can talk about what happened in 2019, but this is another case entirely. By the way, the NNPP candidate was also in that same election. Exactly. So I, I, I don't know, what does the guidelines say? Because it looks like there's now going to be a definition uh, of violence now, willful violence, normal violence. Is, is there really, <laughs> like, how do we do? Well, is, yes. Is that I, new? <laughs> I, I was listening to him when he said, um, you know, we're looking at, you know, different types of, uh, you know, violence. Really, the, the Electoral Act 2022, what, it's, what it does is to give uh, INEC the power to 
uh, take a stand on elections where you have you know violence. So which means that they could actually you know cancel you know the the result there, or if possible declare that election didn't take place and maybe they have to go back to the you know to the polling units because most of these provisions really are meant to checkmate those who use all kind of strong arm tactics to frustrate the election process to carry out you know rigging because all you need to do is just to perpetrate you know violence knowing it's a form of voter suppression prevents sure. those votes you know from being you know counted and because they know that now the the law empowers the INEC officials uh, it could also even include where you bring a gun at gunpoint. You are ordering an official to alter the results and so on. So those were the things that they were meant, you know, to prevent. So if you ask me, uh, what kind of violence really? We're looking at, you know, you know, physical, you know, violence, physical destruction of voting processes, willful damage of ballot boxes, tearing of, you know, ballot papers, or even grabbing of, you know, beavers yeah. and disappearing with it. All those uh, kind of uh, uh, you know, uh, malfeasances will cover as violence in the electoral, you know, process. But you know, but at the end of the day, does not impact the voting process. Or the yeah, the, the violence that would lead to the kind of situation that we're talking about would have affected the voting process one way or the other. Right. That is the point I'm trying to make. Right. Maybe uh, people are unable to vote, or after voting, they come and cut away you know, all the ballot papers and prevent them from being counted because that's what they do if they know that a particular, a particular party is gaining the upper hand, they could then set their, you know, thoughts. And this is one of the major reverses we've seen in this election, really. The fact that you know, just suddenly have, you know, thuggery almost, you know, everywhere. You know, rivers say, oh, thoughts came. In this part of the north, you know, thoughts came. And for me, uh, you know, political parties really need to be held responsible, you know, for this. And one thing that actually came to my mind the more I thought about these uh, spates of violence and disruption, as much as we say they may not have substantially affected the results of the election, but I feel that perhaps it should also be a condition for deregistration of political parties because right. so it, it just keep, yeah, but there must be consequences, you know, okay. for, these, for these actions. Because I was thinking, uh, yes, we are advocating for a National Electoral Offenses Commission and the bill is in the National Assembly and we're going to put all effort. But even if you have this commission, would it really you know, stop this? So there must be serious you know, consequences. It shouldn't just okay. be that as a political party, if you didn't win seats, you are deregistered. Where you, could, you should be held culpable, especially where you have signed the peace accord. You have said we would you know, conduct ourselves peacefully, we would get our, our supporters to conduct themselves peacefully. And if we don't do it, we'll be willing to be you know, subject to uh, the, the dictates of international standards on, on crimes against humanity and every other thing. All right, Mr. Robert, so it's a form of crime, really. Yeah, so but, but, but you know, before now, as I yeah. said, <laughs> covering Arugunadis University, and the latter, I just want to say that the university where that, what is said happened, is Obafemi Olo University. <laughs> oh, there I we go. went to the University of Ife. Okay. <laughs> the oh, wow. Is so you're trying to say it's different, and, right? And, uh, <laughs> and uh, when, I, when I got to the University of Ife, the vice chancellor was uh, Professor uh, Cyril, uh, Cyril uh, what's the surname now? He was, uh, he was an Igbo man, you yeah. know. So, so that was the way the universities were there Indeed. then. And the point that he's making really that we have collapse of values across board. It's a major, you know, problem. And uh, when people don't live up to people's expectations, then they suddenly remember that, oh, you know, you come from here, you don't come from there. Yeah, we, and we have these problems, you know, everywhere. I, I, I come from Osho State, so to say. I should come from Ikiti State, because that was where I was born and bred. That was where my parents, I speak Ikiti fluently. But the reality is that even as a Yoruba man, I probably can't go to Ikiti and say, I want to contest. My childhood friend says, oh, Larry, if you want to contest, you should come to Ikiti State. But I know it will come up. Somebody will remember, come. His parents <laughs> didn't come you know, from here. When we had Oyo State, before Osho State, one of the things that led to the fight for the creation of Osho State was the fact that in the Oyo State Civil Service, the Oyo speak, speaking people started complaining that uh, the the Jesha supposedly were dominating the civil service. Oh, yeah. So you really don't so have had these an end to these, to these and things. Again, and uh, uh, I, I yeah. think we as a people must know that 
our interest is just the same. We all want societies that function, schools that function, hospitals. These are the things we need to look at, True. and this is what we now need to pass on to these you know, leaders. Right. They are giving all these speeches, this is what they will do. We also have to set our own agenda, agenda. You know, for them. Fantastic. All right, let's... Uh, Cyril uh, Owume Chile, that was my master. <laughs> that's when I got to go to uh, Professor uh, Fidel Salen uh, right there. Uh, Professor, uh, thank you for, for staying on. Uh, I don't know if you, uh, you, you're following the collision there uh, at the uh, INECA headquarters in Kano. And uh, talk there about uh, violence, what kind of violence, you know, you know happened. And uh, I'm wondering, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, 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 Professor, sorry, you might have to unmute there. I see the, I see you're, you're actually muted. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, fantastic, so I can that. hear you now, great. Yeah, so sorry about that. Yeah, so, but I didn't quite get what you said, but I suspect you want, you want my opinion concerning what is happening in Kano. Exactly. Now, reg regarding, re regarding the coalition officers' um, behavior of returning to the, the document to look into it again, just to be sure, because you see, you're talking about uh, an election that is so contentious. You know, you're talking about an election with um, so much interest. You know, on 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 party lines. So he has to be very careful. He has to check. He, he has to be sure. You know, of of, of the of, of the records. Because if the coalition officers have made mistakes in their calculation, which he did not take time to check, and he announces, that can be a real problem. You know, it, it can be a real problem. And we're talking about post-election litigation. Uh, and, and these issues that uh, I already imagine between parties among candidates. But you're talking about a state with so many local governments, yeah? So many local governments. I think Kano is one of the largest, um, one of the states with the largest number of local government areas in this country. So it requires um, looking deeper, being sure that the records are correct, that the calculations have been well uh, carried out. But again, you, you see, when you look at 2015 and look at what, what happened then, you know, in terms of violence, in terms of outcome, I think what is, what is critical is, is, is for us to look at the process and the outcome. A good process will naturally determine uh, a good outcome. If the process is faulty, you can be sure of uh, a problematic outcome. And you know, elections in this country. Look at look at Kano. Look at look at the, the the size of Kano. Elections in this country, especially in this election, when everybody thought that at least violence would have. Should should have been so reduced because of the the possibilities of um, um, the, the the reduction of reduction of uh, the risk of risk of fraud, you know, uh, uh, reduction of the risk of fraud by virtue of the deployment of uh, beavers. Fundamentally, beavers is supposed to help in the area of violence reduction. Uh, well, what I mean is if fraud or fraudulent politicians have very little opportunity to be fraudulent, then you can be, sh we should be sure, we should have been sure of uh, less violence. But I think, you know, when people feel threatened, when people, Thing that they cannot get what they want through legitimate um, civic electioneering 
behavior and actions, they can resort to uh, violence to, to express uh, their anger and to make sure that um, mm. if they can't, they can't get it, all right. then the other candidate or party sh shouldn't get it at all. Well, Professor Allen, uh, quite uh, interesting uh, angles to that. We'd like to thank you so much. I know we've kept you up. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your contributions. We know that River State also has uh, suspended uh, the, the coalition, but we'll be back in the coming hours uh, to get uh, more from you. In the meantime, Professor Fidelis Allen is an era analyst joining us from Port Harcourt uh, this morning. Thank you again for your time. Thank you. Well, let's get over to the Cano Coalition Center. Looks like things are getting heated up, so let's listen, listen in. Whether we go into the house or down even the toilet, we are neutral and we'll do justice. One of you was talking about we are doing something that will affect the generality of Cano citizens. I will go beyond that. It will affect the generality of Nigeria. It will affect all of us. I keep saying that my honor, my integrity is going to be at stake. There is so much at stake, particularly me as an individual, and all of us you see here. We came with all countries. Believe you me, I don't even know from heaven what these documents are. You know very well, I just came in on board. I want you to please have that confidence. We have come a long way. We have just two hours. In fact, I am a little skeptical that he could do this in two hours when he takes the request for hours. If you like, or if you don't, we can stay here with you so that you know that he's not being influenced by anybody. I can stay here with you. To me, it's a great freedom. I will stay and will be extended by answers. He will go in a secluded place. You know very well that there is no way he can be working here. It's a public place. The work we are doing is not a public thing. The results are here. I don't see how anybody will answer because we finish. He just wants to go. The last presidential election, we finished. Professor Sao went to my office. We left him. He started with him. He entered all these things and put, you know, in 24 local governments. Entered, and they came back and discussed. Some of you were here. And then there was no need for a declaration. All of you signed. Nobody said you would not sign. Please, have that confidence. In Canada, you are in a neutral place. We didn't say we will go to either one other local government or one government office or one hotel. We are staying here. And uh, if you like, you command the whole of this place. And I say I can stay here with you just to show you that for us is to provide him the enabling environment. We have no input here. The only input I have is to provide the enabling environment for him to do this work, do whatever declaration, whatever this change. What you also must understand, he will come back to you, he will say this is it. He will agree, he will sign, he will do the declaration. Please, I beg you in the name of God, two hours, let's really reach our destination. That destination is the destination of justice. Just in a destination of fairness, it will be fair to all and sundry. Please have confidence that we will do the right thing. Thank you. What's the question? Yes, please give you mic. I said I should give you mic to speak.
we don't have we don't have a police in Canada. We will stay here, and then he goes and does his work. In the in Nigerians and people and then the market just between Nigerians and people in the Because there is a house that is that says, when you are in my sex, when you see a lot, you will not run it. Here, yeah, in this state, eight four years ago, we were living in the magic of and the whole thing was changed and destroyed over. We were having a few companies within us that were, that were working for us, or we knew that we were saved by the last. We knew each other. Hey, as we are speaking now, we are not the I don't know what you can say, but I'm not sure what you can say. So, the government said, I don't know what you can say, but I'm not sure what you can say. Yeah, you can say it. Yeah, you can say it. Over a hundred, no, a hundred and a hundred thousand. There is no loser here. There is no loser. But with the second, with the next contestant. I'm not sure what you can say. No, that please, I want to appeal that in the spirit, the spirit, the spirit. Here we are, we are one of the most 190,000, and no books that you need to say to this thousand, and no books you need to make the money of this thousand. Here we are, we are about to over 100,000. Well, I will still keep our eyes on what's going on at the Kano Coalition Center, not to worry, okay? We'll keep tabs uh, on, on that one. It looks like uh, they're just trying to fine-tune issues and see uh, the mode of that break, whether they will stay in the hall and take that break and do things because uh, uh, the returning officer was saying, well, uh, we are trying to be transparent here. So if you want us to stay in the hall and make that decision, we will, we can. So I uh, would we'll stay with the Kano Coalition Center on this side. But let's let's speak more on, on the issues that have come up, especially as it concerns the conduct of this election. Oh, um, I mean, all through the states. Oh, by the way, we're keeping our eyes on what's happening in Nassau Rusted. Let me just tell our viewers that. So uh, Nassau Rusted results are still coming in uh, as well. Just another local government, Kara, local government area uh, <coughs> has come in. So uh, the aggregation should be shaping up in the coming moment. Uh, we still have Mr. Ezewa Wagu with us in our Abuja studio. Uh, he's an ERAD analyst and also chair partner uh, for electoral reform and also here in our Lagos studio, Mr. Larry Arugundadi, the executive director of IPC, that's International Press Center, as well as an ERAD analyst. Uh, Mr. Arugundadi, I know we're talking about the violence quotient, but just a minute, uh, let me bring in Mr. Nwagu oh, into okay. this one just uh, to get his thoughts, because he was speaking earlier on before we rushed to Kano. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Nwagu, again, uh, the question of violence uh, plays or raises its ugly head in our electionary process. It's almost customary now for that question. Was there any violence? In fact, how many polling units did you record violence? And I wonder, is it that we didn't 
envisage this enough? Is it that we didn't design our election to sort this? Even the laws that are there, they're going to look at the regulations and make a decision. Where exactly uh, can we look to to get a solution to this? Well, I, I think that is, there could be a multi-stakeholder um, engagement to be able to deal with the challenge. Uh, multi-stakeholder because um, apart from the law uh, enforcement aspect of it, there is also the challenge of attitude, which, uh, like like we know, uh, something there was something that happened in which uh, which worked uh, to improve logistics, for instance. Uh, the then I think uh, the one of the traditions the leading traditional ruler in Ikiti, invited members of the NURCW and, and the, the transport companies that were providing logistics and persuaded them to ensure that they delivered on the MOU that they signed. And that worked. So that can be brought into, you know, the, the challenge of, um, the challenge of, violence as well. If we have a multi-stakeholder conversation around the issue, uh, bring security agents in the room, the media, people like you, Kyle, that covers, has covered this election, civil society folks, traditional rulers themselves, and religious leaders, and women organizations and platforms, and professional groups to say no. What needs to happen to be able to deal with this challenge? Uh, I think ideas, uh, if, if, they are, if they are made in a way that the conversations are not read and they are not meant to just be for uh, ticking the box purposes, you can harvest ideas there that can be helpful. Um, I think that the, the conversation is there are also historical, we need to learn where all of this can lead to. We had a Justice Lemo Committee report after the 2011 uh, crisis in some states of the Federation, Bauchi, Akwaibo, and the rest of them. The report, the, 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 out, the, the white paper on that report is somewhere in the shelf of the SGF. Not anything was taken from that, from that uh, white paper. I'm sure that before then also, before now the, the, the crisis of the Omo Borio and the rest of it that played out, that led to this point where we are now, we need to interrogate all of those things and see whether there are things that we can bring from there to assist the law enforcement agents to be able to deal with these issues. But one thing that I have realized is that once something becomes pervasive and as a people we take deep interest in engaging with it, we are always finding a way to, to push it back. And the recurring issue of violence uh, is beginning to, you know, put a black tar on the electoral integrity and the outcomes that come from our elections. It may not be uh, pervasive and widespread in terms of the number of, but each of it diminishes us as a people and reduces the respect that we have for those who have even come to see how we organize this election. There are a lot of people, African countries, people from Gambia, from you know, Cameroon and the rest of them who came into the country, Malawi, to, to study how we do things. And if this is the kind of things that they are taking away, uh, people learn negative things faster than positives. Uh, before we know it, it will become a, a, a cross-cutting culture even around uh, our neighbors and, and Africa. So it's important that we take some introspective look into some of the materials that we already have that have dealt with these issues and see what we can harvest from them. Right, just to give a quick update, uh, thank you, Mr. Wagu, uh, that the two hours uh, which was requested uh, for by the uh, returning <coughs> officer has now been granted uh, by the agents and um, the stakeholders present in the hall 
at the Cano Coalition Center. So two hours uh, has been granted in two hours' time. It is expected that uh, well, the, uh, the officers, the INAIC officials, will reconvene and will get something definitive. Again, all the four, 44 local government areas' uh, results uh, have come in uh, for Kano State, but there was a, a little bit of issue trying to uh, determine uh, you know, how to place the <laughs> violence that occurred and what decision to make regarding the violence. So that's the update. You're seeing live images right there uh, in the insert, just right here on your screen from the Kano Coalition Center. Ladi. And obviously the issue of transparency, you yes. know, trying to be as transparent as possible. Anyway, let's, uh, let me uh, come to you now, uh, Mr. Wagru, uh, back to you again. So obviously this uh, issue of uh, ethnicity and uh, religion, you know, rearing its head right now. But at the end of the day, before the elections, you know, it wasn't staring us in the face like it is, you know, right now. And I'm wondering, how do we... Um, not allow elections and uh, politics, you know, divide us along these lines. Ladi, I think uh, I think people just throw in whatever they think can can help them. You know, politicians are very um, exploitative, if you like, in terms of what the their, their designs and sometimes those designs are not they are not positive designs. Um, if they find out that religion will be an issue, they will, uh, they will uh, play Mr. Wagru, and Mr. Wagru, uh, sorry to if cut they him. find out that it is a... Sorry to cut you, Mr. Wagru. Sorry, we have to get an update now uh, from kind of from our correspondent, uh, Eliasu, uh, right there. Uh, Eliasu, thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, let's uh, get the update. We saw the drama you know, playing out uh, right there at the INEC headquarters in Kano. Yes, there was a serious drama as uh, the INEC uh, returning officer requested for about two hours for him to go and look at the results again to reconfirm uh, what decisions he should make with regards to the violence that occurred uh, almost across the state. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, local government had issues uh, with regards to violence and disruption of the elections. In Dambato local government, for instance, about 79 polling units were disrupted. And uh, also in the other local government, in fact, almost all the local government, I think it's only one local government where we didn't uh, see much of that. Uh, so this uh, made him uh, just uh, a, a margin of uh, 128,000 votes uh, between the two parties make the final decision. So he now requested for the, for that, and the, uh, a lot of agents are not happy with, uh, with with him to go out. In fact, some of them are asking him, even if the law has given him that right for him to go out uh, for some time uh, and, and make uh, some adjustments. So there are, a lot of them are skeptical and thinking maybe there is. However, the uh, NX rec, uh, Mr. Abdul Zongo also uh, intervened, and in his intervention, he, he he requested an appeal to them that they should trust them, and they are going to be just, even if they go out and come back. Uh, back to you, Niota. All right, thank you, Elias. Uh, it's actually Ladi Williams and Kaido Yulu here. <laughs> thank you so much uh, for that. So I guess uh, we have it there. Two hours. I uh, will wait for them to reconvene and we'll get uh, those results uh, coming in. So uh, just just pardon me, uh, Sadiq, if you're still there, I just want to get your thoughts on this because, you know, we saw images uh, from Kano State. Uh, Sadiq, you're still there. Am I right? Yes, I'm there. Okay, yeah. we saw images of, I think, people uh, in their numbers uh, following the results. They were said to be following the results to the coalition center, you know, and they wanted to watch uh, the results and ensure that nothing goes wrong. We understand the politics uh, in Kano, and we we understand how much of a you know cult following uh, you know one of the parties uh, has. Even for the other party, you know, there's just a, a lot of the atmosphere is quite charged. And I wonder how if you've had a maybe reason to feel the pulse, maybe from the agents there, the people there, and by extension, uh, people in Kano. What is what is the feel like? How are they receiving? Uh, I know they've had to wait all night. So how are they receiving what is happening right now? This uh, call for an adjournment for two hours. Not bearing in mind that you know they probably saw something similar in 2019. 
exactly. Uh, the experience of the 2019 is actually uh, making the tension uh, worse because the experience in 2019 was similar. However, the, the, the margin in 2019 was uh, about 20,000, but this one is about 128,000. Uh, but, uh, you know, and there is so much tension, if I can say, uh, around the town. And uh, although the security agents are doing a lot, because as we are coming here, a kilometer away, nobody can come close to the INEC office. There are military uh, men, police, and what have you, and they have been shooting their guns to even scare the, the, the public. In the local government coalition center, one of the reasons that delayed the arrival of Dala local government uh, results was that there are a lot of people there because Dala is one of the uh, uh, largest uh, local government where we have a lot of voters. So the people are so much interested in that particular local government. So they trooped over there and they couldn't allow the, that made the, the coalition to even stop over there. And it has to take the intervention of security men to even go and pick up the coalition officers from the Allah coalition center down to the coalition center here in uh, the INEC headquarters. I, I remember that you also reported something uh, that played out earlier on the coalition officer uh, of Kura local government uh, collapsing upon his arrival uh, at the INEC entrance and he had to be rushed uh, to the clinic and uh, was receiving treatment. I don't know if you have an update uh, on that one. It was quite shocking to see that uh, playing out. I, I understand, as you said, that the, the atmosphere is charged. Uh, but do you have an update uh, on, on that coalition officer from uh, Kura local government area? What we are hearing from the, uh, the, the INEC here in Kano is that he is uh, responding to treatment. Uh, it has to do to, with, with uh, the tension that he, he went through because uh, since yesterday, probably he has, not, he has not sleep and what have you. So as he's coming down to this coalition center, he now collapsed at the gate, at the entrance of the coalition center. Fortunately enough, there was uh, an ambulance to carry him to uh, Bayern University clinic. He is right now at the Bayern University clinic uh, receiving treatment uh, and the Coalition officer of uh, Garumala actually stepped up for him and presented his result. That's why we are here now. Because if he hadn't uh, presented that result, he wouldn't have reached uh, this time. Back to you. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Sadiq uh, Ilias, our correspondent uh, right there. Anyway, uh, uh, Mr. Arubidadi, I'm sure you have... <laughs> yeah, you know, we're talking about uh, this issue of violence and, uh, you know, the, the, the electoral official there was saying that they need to go and check, check, you know, the kind of violence. Incidentally, the, the electoral act really talks about electoral offences. It didn't really talk about, you know, violence. But some of these offences could actually mean, you know, violence. And the election day offences actually contained in section 126 uh, that's uh, part seven of the electoral act really and uh, you know they are listed you know there including you know not canvassing for votes or the sitting for votes and so on but if you are looking at violence it says in 126f that uh, you shall not be in possession of any offensive uh, you know weapon uh, that is weapon that can be used maybe to attack people or to disrupt you know the electoral you know process that's what it talks about then specifically it talks about uh, snatching or destroying any election you know material right uh you know so those are the kind of you know offenses so for for them they need not look far all they need is to first check the what you know the law says because what would then amount to violence would be if any of these, you know, happened, maybe snatching, like I said earlier on, you know, destruction. And then we also have, you know, the guidelines. And the, the, both the law and the guidelines give them, you know, the power to take decisions when you have, you know, situations, you know, like that. And for me, it might be advisable, really, that yeah. they are not rushing to make this, you know, declaration. Because the good thing about this electoral process, the electoral law, too, is that it allows some measure of review, even in the case of Lagos. Uh, we saw a situation where, at a stage, they said, let's go and check these figures again to be sure that, you know, everything, you know, has up. So it's good to establish the facts and then come back 
and release the result based on the facts that uh, they would have established. Mm. Uh, if the parties would then uh, maybe go to court or challenge, they, they would have you know, a basis, but they would have at least you know, satisfied the provisions of the law. It would have been good for them to be able to say that this happened here and it violated you know, this particular section of the electoral law, which is why I just made reference to what are defined as election day offenses in the electoral acts. First, Mr. Wagu, uh, this briefing that INEC uh, gave, I, I don't know, it looks like INEC listened, because that, I think it was one of the major issues that was raised uh, during the presidential election in the aftermath that INEC needed to come out and speak more to issues, answer questions. So uh, it looks like INEC listened, right? Well, it, it's part of that uh, thing about keeping the people informed, keeping them interested, and ensuring that they are, they are on the journey with you. Uh, but to be fair to INEC as a, as a, as a public institution in Nigeria, it's, it's, uh, it had, at some point I even felt that it was, uh, it was over communicating. Uh, but when it then mattered most, uh, it took them 48 hours to <laughs> come out to speak to Nigerians. And that, that lag, uh, created some real challenge for, 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 for the institution. And I think that they, they, now, they understand that they have to, at every point in time, not allow um, conspiracies to assume a larger than life uh, image. Uh, Kano, Kano has uh, a history, you know, the history of elections in Kano doesn't seem to really to up any surprises in terms of how it shapes out. Um, at, at every point in time, the nature of their politics is such that uh, uh, they, are, they, they throw up personality cults that, that you know, come to, to the point of even worship. If you, if you know uh, that's the land of Amino Kano, it's also the land of um, Abubakar, Abubakar Imi, and, and the Kwasia movement that is building is also showing that uh, that pattern. So um, many of the people also are, are so radicalized in terms of uh, understanding, you know, what they believe and what they think the direction of their state should go. And what is even intriguing for Kano is that they do not really care what any other person is saying. They can they can go their separate way. They, 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 they voted MPP when every other person was an MPN. And uh, in 1999, this Kwakwaso was elected under the PDP. Uh, and then he was taken away by the APP. And then he returned again as APC. And then that shift that you keep seeing in, in their politics is something that. Uh, scholars are, are, are deeply interested in. And for issues around violence and the rest of them, um, even in, in normal times, uh, these are people who stone visiting <laughs> presidents who they don't agree with. They, they line up stones on the road and, and belt uh, those, those public figures. Yeah, so Kano, Kano is, in, is, is interesting and is, is a good place to watch. Um, 2019, uh, I hope will not replay now, and, and if, because the, the situation is a bit more charged up right now than than before. You know. Well, you got a chuckle out of Mr. Robidadi <laughs> there. Honestly, I, you, you know, it just casts uh, the minds of a lot of people back to what they saw then or what they have seen play out in, in Kano. I like both gentlemen to speak about you know, the procedure uh, moving on from here, because that question was put to Mr. Okoye right there. And, you know, he tried to talk about the margin of lead. He wasn't, he didn't, he didn't speak definitely again, because he said he's not quite sure what's playing out in Kano. Well, we have the benefit uh, of some information as to what's playing out uh, in Kano. At least we understand that the difference right now between uh, uh, both parties is over a hundred thousand. I think the decision to be made now is how to categorize the violence and, 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 and all of that. But in terms of the procedures, uh, Mr. Wagu, is it clear enough 
such that even if uh, people are not happy, they can look to the laws, uh, to the, I mean, he mentioned through the Constitution, the Electoral Act, and the, the regulations and guidelines. They can look to it and say, well, we're, we're not happy, but it's right there in the law, so, well, we trust the law. Is that, is that clear? Well, what, what is beautiful about Kano, as, as we saw in, that, uh, in the clip that, you, that we saw from, from there, is that uh, this, the, the, elect, the Electoral Act, the manual, the, the guidelines, uh, is not like the Bible in the days of the Pope, when, when it is only the Pope that had a copy. Um, you saw that everyone there uh, seemed to have their own guidelines and are interpreting it the way they, they understand. But what, is, what we need to happen is that there has to be a clear need. And the conditions for a supplementary election is, is also very clear in, in terms of what needs to happen. If you do not get the 25% uh, uh, in thoughts of the, the local governments, and then you do not have the highest number of votes. Those, those are the, the things that are coming. So, but this intervention that is going on now is, is will lead to further cancellations. That, that is why there is apprehension on the part of um, the, the party agents. And so, until that exercise is, is completed, we may not be able to make a call in terms of what the, the outcome may be. So the, the challenge is that they are going to look at in places where there are infractions. And if uh, those inf if the infractions are strong enough to, to lead to cancellations, it may alter the current, uh, the, the current lead that, that, uh, that we, are, we, are, we are seeing. And what that could then mean be that uh, some of these uh, guidelines and, and, and issues of law will then become something that the returning officer will have to make a direct call on. And, and I don't think we should conjecture what that will be until it comes back from that break. Well, I guess we'll keep uh, waiting for that. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Mr. Wago. Uh, but let me come to you now, uh, Mr. Roman Daddy. So, you know, see what's actually playing <laughs> out. You know, right there in Kano. Kano. What, what are your thoughts? Well, I think it's a very delicate situation, a bit complex, because uh, if you look at one twenty, over 100,000, or, or, or it may look like a big gap, but in reality, it may not really be a big gap. And I think what is playing out now is what happens if all those places where they are, they are talking about alleged violence, maybe the votes are invalidated and they said we, you know, we cancel election in those areas. It may tilt the balance of uh, you know, victory one way or the other. And so they, they, they need to really address the issue you know, carefully. And in fact, it would be much more complex if a decision is taken at the level of the state coalition center and there's a review at the higher level of uh, the commission uh, with what Mr. First also Koye is saying, and then you have another you know, reversal. I think what should happen at this stage really is for them to be guided. And I don't think there's anything in the Electoral Act that says that uh, the, the commission cannot draw the attention of those handling the coalition at the state to say that these are the areas of the guidelines and these are the areas of the law that you have to look at. This is the part that you have, and this is the part that you do not have. So that when they come back, I would expect a situation whereby the man speaks authoritatively to the provisions of the law, to so say that based on this, you know, uh, section 126, we had, you know, balance snatching, based on these guidelines, we had this, and on that basis, we have taken this decision as per these, you know, polling, you know, units. And that decision could also be that they will go back and have election. It, it also happened you know, in Lagos, where they concluded that elections didn't really happen in some polling units, and they should go back to those polling units and, and vote. So that people would then be satisfied that there really there's no you know, hidden agenda. Because from what your correspondent was saying, when the man took excuse, people were wondering, are you allowed to even step out of this you know, room? Because we're dealing with, you know, when it comes to electoral context, particularly results, you are dealing with so many things. You are dealing with fear. 
you are dealing with perception. And the trust you, know, you are dealing. There is also an existing, you know, trust, you know, crisis. And you know, somebody may say he's going out there to go and make a call. He wants to go and do this. So they rather they would rather have them imprisoned within the walls of the of the collation center and, and allow them, you know, to go out. So it, it, I think it's and, a, it's and a and quite. That's uh, why we have the same issues with the polling officers at uh, VGC. At VGC, exactly. exactly. You know, who were more or less, you know, had those and they said, they were they, you know, and wanted to stop the election. Right. The people said, no, you cannot, you know, stop it. Uh, so it's quite, you know, delicate because the, the stakes are high, really. And I believe the parties now, and like we always say, as at now, the parties already know what they've scored across all the polling units. They probably have those results. So they're looking in that direction uh, in terms of whether it will favor them or not. And where we can only come in is to say that let the, uh, you know, the state coalition officer, whatever they are, err on the side you know, of the law. Because it's a very tense situation. Don't always forget that uh, in our election you know, manipulation risk index, uh, Kano was one of the states that we consistently identified as high risk in the first Emory report, yeah. the second report, and the third you know, report. And that is also what we see you know, playing out. And where you have high possibility of election manipulation, you are likely to have you know, violence. And as a matter of fact, we had pre-election violence in Kano, uh, when it, uh, particularly towards the presidential election, you know, some candidates were returning, there were attacks, there were killings. And we have to, the situation has to be managed. They have a responsibility to manage the situation so that it does not snowball into another round you know, of violence. And that would then become you know, a bigger you know, problem that can be managed even by the you know, coalition officers themselves. So, so it, it's, it's quite interesting, it's quite delicate. But like uh, Eze was saying earlier on, Kano has his own rich history of you know politics in nigeria it's, when, when it's, a, it's a case they, it's a case you know they're not happy with you they, they fact, <laughs> that was when i had to <laughs> that's when i had to joke when he said when they are not happy with you yeah. you know they saw you there, there is a strong, that we should be able to also there's history of you know independent mindedness there right. there's history of deaf ears people standing up to the establishment so when we look talk about the likes of you know amino kano people don't realize that those were the days when you know the you know the, the the feudal system was very very powerful. You know the men were powerful, and he stood out and said I was standing for the talakawas, the poor, and that meant you know defined I mean defiling the uh, you know the status quo uh, as it were. So that is really you know Kano for you, and you keep having it uh, again and again. It was Kano in the Second Republic, uh, if you recall that uh, you know the governor gave a query to the emir and then it led to a big explosion of uh, violence so i think this kind of history should also guide the conduct of uh, the electoral officials to know that they are dealing every stakeholder there yeah. if the security agencies yeah. because like we said they are aware of all these uh, threats to election security reports and we don't want to have a situation where things would have happened and then that is when they're they are just deploying their men or they, they are saying that they don't know the perpetrators. As we speak now, with the tension in that coalition center, obviously there are different gatherings around that area. People saying different things, what they may do, what they may not do. This is the time for deployment of intelligence, to gather intelligence, to be able to nip some of these things in the board. And, and maybe also, in fact, be proactive with intervention we talk we yeah, talk earlier, about, um, we talk constantly yeah. about uh, you know crisis uh, communication yeah. uh, you would think that at this point in time nothing stops the state commissioner of police or the first PRO in the state from coming out We're with talking the about the police now i did remember listening to one of the uh, collusion centers today and yes. um, they talked about how you know the thugs were attacking some of these polling units then the police came and they ran away so I'm like, if the police was there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the, the, there are two layers of uh, police in elections. You know, the police, the police officers who are... Or just put right, those sensitive spots. Let them man the Where well, they're supposed to have, like, those who are armed, but who are not often at the vicinity of the police unit, but they are there for rapid intervention, for reinforcement when things happen. But we haven't really seen that because people still manage to grab these... You know, ballot boxes and disappear or destroy, you know, beavers. We have not seen that. 
But where, where, what we are now, what we have seen at this collation center, uh, if we talk in terms of, uh, you know, in, in the language of our profession, when we talk about, you know, conflict sensitive journalism, it's an early warning signal. It, it tells you that something could happen. And what we're saying here is that, you know, the law enforcement and security should not wait for that thing to happen before, you know, they, they, they come in. Probably to just address the people and say, you know, they, they are going to follow, you know, the electoral law. Uh, people should know that they also have opportunity to, uh, you know, uh, express their grievances, petitions could be submitted, just to calm, you know, the situation. But again, it, it will right. be interesting because the, the outcome of Kano really would also kind of, you know, give us some way the map is looking at exactly. in terms of uh, that, that whether we're going to have a blue somewhere. <laughs> exactly. Well, <let> <laughs> or whether it's going to be... I'm uh, talking about colors that we have. Uh, <laughs> right there at my uh, special <laughs> board there. Yeah. To give us uh, those details. So this is the ERAD, the uh, election results analysis dashboard. This is our, this is our extra anchor now. This right. is our extra, uh, you third, know, resource today. resource yeah, exactly. tool on, <laughs> on, on on our election coverage channels, television in partnership with Iaga Africa. What we essentially do is get those results from uh, INEX IREV. That's the INEX Result Viewing Portal, and then we have data. Uh, officers at the back end who try to put this together. I mean, for a lot of these results, they're still preliminary because it takes a process. They have to verify uh, the results before they are uploaded, and then uh, we have some of them here. But at least there are states we can confirm. At least 10 states, the results have come in. Uh, states like Lagos, Ogun, uh, or your Quara. I mean, those ones are official. We've been discussing Kano, which has been quite, uh, what will I say, controversial, but it looks like uh, the the, the place is calm now. The collision center is calm for the next two hours while uh, the officials, the reg, the returning officer and others make a decision uh, on the way forward. We've seen Sokoto State also. A big talking point which I will bring to you uh, in a moment as well uh, as Adamawa. Now, Adamawa, the result is not official yet. And uh, we'll bring you some 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 latest news from Adamawa because uh, what is playing out that there is 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 really. Uh, in fact, let's take you to uh, Adamawa State uh, right now, where th there's been uh, lots of controversy in in the build up to the announcement of results. So earlier on, uh, as you can see there, uh, party agents and and all of the stakeholders there uh, were involved in a rowdy session as at the INEC Electoral Results Coalition Center uh, for the governorship elections in Yola, the state capital. Now, the controversy was particularly over the results of the last local government area of the state, that's Fufuri. And it raged on. There was a display of frayed nerves, exchange of allegations of a doctoring of results, snatching of results sheets by thugs. And you saw both the APC and the PDP agents were pointing accusing fingers uh, at each other over the results sheets. As at 1 a.m., uh, which is what you're seeing uh, right there, uh, the officials were still trying to sort out uh, a solution uh, to the AMPAS. And it is believed by some that the result from Fufuri uh, could alter the general outcome of uh, the result, which is why you you see all of that controversy, the argument at the back and forth. But that was around 1 a.m. But just moments ago, uh, we got breaking news from our reporter who is right there in the thick of things uh, that the announcement of the Fufuri local government area of Adamo State has now been deferred till 12 noon today and that followed the disagreements which we saw uh, over the results but then uh, things got even uglier uh, afterwards uh, because thugs said to have surrounded the INEC coalition center in Yola the state capital and they are said to have refused uh, you know anyone from leaving uh, the INEC office uh, just moments ago in fact our correspondent reports that it took the combined efforts of the army police and other security agencies for you know some of them to leave the scene now in the process even with all of that security cover uh, our correspondent's car was attacked uh, by the thugs they succeeded in smashing his car destroying uh, you know uh, the rear windshield in fact uh, it, it took just it was a near miss for himself uh, his our cameraman and a colleague 
uh, from another news media agency to escape from uh, the attackers. Uh, so that's the state of things right there uh, in Yola just some moment ago. So it's important uh, to have security reinforcement because it's a collision center. I mean, our correspondent was telling us about what is playing out in Kano, how the area is cordoned off and you're not even able to get within a few meters or kilometers from that place. But it looks like Yola is getting heated up. I, I think we understand the background uh, to what's happening in Adamawa State. That's the state uh, where we have uh, a female uh, governorship candidate and it looks like at least from the results we were seeing that maybe we might see history in the making but it's still important to say that the official results have not been called in fact that's where the issue is right now uh, mr rugundadi it's, it's it's really sad uh, yeah. what we're seeing playing out mr wagu I, I know you might want to weigh in because we we're just discussing about violence during elections and we've had uh, to now add this one to the long list now this is not even during elections this is post, post -election. ele or post voting if, post -voting. if we could say that yeah. uh, I, I don't know mr wagu uh, mr rugundadi your, your thoughts on this one really okay i, I think uh, so it, the, the thuggery has, is becoming a recurring you know, decima in, this, in these elections. Yeah. And what we've seen now is that it's, it spreads across the country. So really, uh, political thuggery, as far as this election is concerned, is not actually you know, an ethnic thing. Mm. It, it's more or less you know, pan-Nigeria, which is quite un, unfortunate. But the question really is, how did those thugs manage to get to a situation where they're able to surround that coalition center because we're supposed to have you know security you know presses i guess we're not talking about one two or three people when we're still talking about surrounding a old building which means they are in numbers are we saying that they're so powerful that they could not even have been prevented from getting to that you know vicinity it's a major it's a major problem i think like kano this is the state of interest. Mm. In fact, already, as we speak, based on earlier results and projections, definitely some already are celebrating the fact that yeah. you are having you know, a, a female governor. Uh, so there's a, a tendency to also look at this within the you know, gender perspectives, particularly the comments allegedly uh, credited to so, you know, one of the you know, candidates who contested against her saying, oh, trying to kind of make a you know, put some religious coloration yeah. to the idea, you know, of a woman, you know, le leading the state. But this is a woman who has been a senator, who has been representing the state. And of course, uh, I'm sure, you know, there are those of us who have been trying to push a kind of gender agenda in the elections will be happy to see, you know, a female governor, but based on a free and fair, you know, process. So for me, it's quite, you know, worrisome. And now, in, in Kano, we're talking of uh, having to shift uh, uh, further collision till mm. about maybe 4, you know, 30 a.m. Now they're talking about 12 noon. That could really be a long a time. A long wait. A long wait, Quite really. Enough. And that could also really, really increase, you know, the tension. And, and I feel that there has to be interventions, like we said in the case, you know, of kind of what exactly, you know, is the problem. We have to find a way of, the, you know, the appropriate officials at the national level giving some advice to them on how to manage you know a situation you know like this what is the problem why are these you know results not there has there been some violations you know of the electoral law if there has been this is what you need you know to do whether you are going to have uh, voting cancelled and taking place in polling units where it didn't you know take place or you note, you take note of all those, you know, infractions, and look at whether they substantially, you know, affect the result of the election. I believe one of the things we we're trying to run away from in these elections is the whole idea of declaring some elections inconclusive. Inconclusive. I think that is a lot of people do not want a, to. A lot of people do not want to wear that. And, and, you know, and that is why it will be good to ensure that everybody is guided, well guided. Right. So and they are aware, well, the aware says. of what to do. Mr. Yeah. Wagu, this is a state that is particularly interesting. This is the home state of the PDP's presidential yeah, candidate. Yeah. The governor in this state is seeking re-election. Uh, I mean, and then we have a female governorship candidate whom a lot of people are projecting uh, as the winner. And now we're seeing all of this playing out. I don't know if you saw this coming, but 
I don't know. What are your thoughts? It would be keenly contested. Uh, like you did say, uh, the vice, uh, the presidential candidate of the PDP and, uh, and a governor who is seeking re-election and somebody who is also uh, deeply rooted in the politics of Adamawa State. And uh, the, 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 the new person on the block, the, the candidate of the APC, who also has some track record in terms of uh, uh, political credentials. Uh, the, 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 it, we, we are looking to Adamawa on a more uh, intentional basis because it, it will signal if the outcome that we are, that uh, looks like it's what's going to happen eventually comes to fruition, it will signal a, a, dip, a, a lift for the struggle for, uh, for, for, for uh, you know, female political participation in the country. And that's, that's the reason to look at that. So I, I, but I, as, as, as we are just looking at you, Kaidi, I, I started thinking in my head, is there, could there be a, a mandate protection thing that is going on? Because every, every action of citizens should not be just uh, dismissed as action of thugs. Mm. Uh, because those who want to profit from certain things could just label people and say they are talks. Are the people themselves interested in saying, look, we, we voted in a particular way. We want to be able to ensure that, you know, uh, that what we voted is what eventually uh, comes out. So that, I think that distinction needs to be made uh, so that we are able to separate mandate protection from uh, the rising criminals that are called talks. Uh, you know, this this whole talk greeting is, 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 for me, a one way in which the security agents uh, slow down in taking action because they are called political talks. Uh, but if we, if, we, if we brand them what they are, that they are committing crimes, uh, you know, creating siege mentality, violence, intimidation, and the rest of them, and that the, the law enforcement agents can go after them uh, without attaching that political thing to them as people who are committing crimes against the state. I think, I think it will be more helpful. I am beginning to feel a sense in which there is a, you know, in everywhere. So politicians will unleash criminals on citizens, you know, dehumanize them, and then we just say, oh, they are political talks, you know, and then that's, that's where it ends. Talks were arrested. And then, since they are political talks, they, they are also politically released. But these are, this is something that I think we, we can take. But I, Adamawa is, is important. Uh, I think there are much more stronger interests, because if, the out, if a different outcome comes there, it would also uh, put some kind of you know, uh, rethinking in terms of what happened on February 25th in Adamawa State. Uh, even though the dynamics are different. But I know that there is intensity in terms of the kind of shift that um, most people in that state are looking for. And let's wait till uh, 12 noon today when all of this will hopefully will be put to test. But all of this signposts one thing, that the election is becoming more and more competitive. Mm, yeah. um, if, if you have a situation in which uh, opposition and position political parties are slugging it out in the way we have seen it. There is something to be uh, excited about in, in, in all of that. We, Like I said yesterday, we are coming from a place where uh, all of this won't be necessary because the results will have been written in, in somewhere and, and announced and then um, you will be asked to go to court. But both citizens, party agents and everybody is engaging in ensuring that the law uh, which guides the electoral process is respected. And I think that is something that we need to celebrate. Absolutely. Uh, thanks, Mr. Wagu. But, you know, looking at this map, I, I mean, we'll have dwelt more on Adamawa State because of, the, of what is playing out. But uh, seeing the way the, the, the map is changing, uh, we've confirmed at least uh, 10 states. Uh, I know Sokoto sticks out uh, for a lot of people, uh, especially because uh, they voted uh, one way uh, for the presidential election and, and a lot then, of people 
thought, okay, we'll take it for granted, especially because it looked like there was this, uh, there was this move, especially in northern states, uh, voting for the PDP, uh, quite a number of them. But uh, the shocker came and the APC uh, clinched Sokoto State. And, you know, we, we talked about the backstory to this, the fact that uh, the winner, uh, the governor-elect now, is used to be the... The deputy, deputy governor uh, to the to Tambua. To Tambua. He to stayed Tambua. in the APC, and perhaps it's paying off. And I remember Ladi and I yeah. saying, "So maybe um, Sokoto is now back where they where began where anyway, is. because <laughs> Governor Tambua was in the APC. They were together 2015 up until 2018, when he now moved uh, back to the PDP. So, so maybe this might be some kind of uh, lesson, you know, for you know when your principal leaves." Uh, the, the party, you as a deputy can actually stay and still make it. What? Yeah. You know, Zamfara <laughs> yes, could have been that part of me. You know, the governor of Zamfara actually moved uh, to the APC. His deputy <laughs> stayed back uh, in the PDP, but you know the usual. Exactly. Uh, it didn't quite happen it, for it, him. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't know, Mr. Rugunadi, is it's, this a, it, an exception? See, it, it's, a, it's a gamble. I guess the deputy governor saw something that perhaps oh, others did. didn't see. Yeah. And just decided to jump in you know, a ship and uh, picked up you know the tickets and then here we are you know uh, upstaging you know the apple card as we say it has suddenly becoming you know the governor and uh, you know the state has now gone you know from you know pdp to apc which you know didn't really happen i, I guess we're also seeing a practical manifestation of the popular saying that all politics is local, it's local. really. Yeah. And uh, when it comes to local politics, and again, it also speaks to the fact that the, the electorate are designing, they are able to you know, make their choices. They, they know where to go. And then when it comes to the states, they're looking in a different you know, direction. Perhaps it could also be a, a form of, and I think it is really, some of these results are also memorandum, I mean, a kind of a referendum on the performance of the governors or the performance of uh, the elected you know, leaders. So the election itself is a form of referendum where people are speaking their mind in different ways uh, in terms of whether they, they've really accepted wh uh, those who are there, whether they've performed very well or the way they perceive you know, their performance. And they just feel that uh, let's move in another direction. Although there are always other you know, dynamics that come into play. In some cases, it could also be that uh, uh, in some states, they look at which senatorial zone has produced a governor, which senatorial zone should be the next one. In some cases, people don't feel that the outgoing governors should anoint their successors. In some cases, we see resistance you know, to that. So sure. all these might just be various you know, factors that have been in play in, in Sokoto State. But it's quite lucky because it's not every you know, deputy governor that leaves and moves to another political party that necessarily also wins. Remember what happened in those states, you know, the other time? Mm. <laughs> the deputy governor had a disagreement, you know, with the governor, he left, and then put up his own, and at the end of the day, he didn't, he didn't didn't really, it didn't work out. So <laughs> it, it, it's, sometimes it doesn't always work out. Yeah. But like I said, he probably saw, you know, something, and he knew that maybe he was even promised that ticket. Maybe... He wasn't sure it would be the one that would, you know, take over. He ran in 2019. He, he ran in 20. I think, yeah, he ran in 2019. He ran against. If you, if you recall, yeah. so in a way, he's been able to test the waters, and he felt confident enough, you know, to move on. And that's where, why we are where we are or where they are in Sokoto now. <laughs> well, it's Nigeria, so you can It's Nigeria, out. yeah, exactly, <laughs> you know. Where they are. <laughs> it's interesting. And, you know, we, we used to say that... Uh, what you are looking for in Sokoto may be <laughs> your Sokoto. That Perfect is your time pocket. to use that, right? So <laughs> maybe the man realized that what what he was looking for in the uh, APC is uh, there in uh, PDP, and then I never knew there would be an appropriate time to use that saying. I think <laughs> now is a very interesting time to use it, uh, uh, Mr. Wagu. Uh, looking at this map, especially for the results we've confirmed already, some of them are still. Uh, we're still trying to get you know final confirmation. States like Kano, Adamawa, and the rest. But uh, for you, I mean, we've gotten. Uh, Lagos. Uh, Lagos was the one uh, we got some moments ago. I think one of the latest official uh, results uh, to come in. Uh, which would you say is most uh, 
uh, will I say shocking for you because you know we had like a, a conversation pre-election, looked at the map, the presidential election. But which would you say is most intriguing uh, for you? Uh, sticks out very, very strongly because. Uh, I, didn't uh, Mr. Wago, I didn't get the first part of what you said. That, uh, what states did you say? I, I didn't get that part. Pardon me. I said Sokoto sticks out. Oh, there you go, Sokoto again. Please Sokoto sticks out very strongly uh, for me, and the reason the reason why that is so is because uh, deputy governors, uh, perhaps Ganduje is one of the one of the uh, lucky deputy governors who was able to take over from uh, his principal. And w one of the ways in which he succeeded in doing that was to, uh, in, the, in the Nigerian palace, played along with Kwa Kwansu uh, without, uh, you know, was just there, pretended to be colorless and, and <laughs> all of that, and then eventually... <laughs> he succeeded in getting that uh, power. And if you understand how that happened, uh, it, it's actually because of uh, what Comrade Arugun Daddy talked about, which is the issue of zoning. Sometimes the zoning arrangement is not just about the fact that somebody becomes governor and the other one becomes deputy. It's just a balance of uh, interest to be able to win election at, at the material time. Sometimes the one who is the deputy governor may have stronger electoral, um, you know, uh, electoral, uh, if, uh, if you like, value uh, so than even the one who, uh, who eventually is, is made to be the governor. And if you see Sokoto particularly, uh, for a deputy governor to say, I'm not, I'm not leaving, and face all the persecutions that come with not leaving, uh, and then eventually goes to clinch uh, the coveted position of the governor. I, I think that there is something to study uh, in, in, in that. Um, I also was, I was looking to see, uh, I think Akwai Bomb has been, Akwai Bomb has come as well. Yeah. Uh, if I'm right. Yes, it uh, has. I was looking to see a, a more stronger contest in Akwai Bomb, but it, it appeared that uh, the APC that I was hoping we'd be able to make some showing, especially with uh, what we saw from the uh, National Assembly election where Senator Pabio got some got his senatorial ticket. I was thinking that, though I knew that the crisis uh, that the, the APC had up to the elections and also even the PDP itself in terms of litigation and rest will have shaped the election, but I didn't, I didn't see that. I saw a YPP showing that that was strong. It also comes again to the fact that politicians are big, just use these parties as vehicles. Uh, like I said yesterday, mere vote catching machines. Uh, YPP is having a very strong showing, coming second in Akwai Bomb State. I think that that for me is also something that uh, is exciting. And I'm hoping that this, some of these little gains that these political parties make, they can they can consolidate on it and begin to see how they can build, you know, over a period of time. And because the lesson again that comes from Sokoto is that of persistence, that that determination that I don't have to I don't have to always join the bad wagon and and you know follow the 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 the, 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 the trend. But I expected that uh, Tambua uh, Governor Tambua would have been able to. Uh, Show, show stronger presence in terms of uh, the election. Even the election that brought him in 20, 2019 itself, the margin, of, the margin with which he won that election was very slim. So it's also to study what is it that uh, makes those two political parties so dominant in, in, in that state. Does it have something to do with uh, the, 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 the former governors? Uh, you have the likes of uh, Senator uh, sorry, at, uh, Governor Tayuru Bafarawa, Tayuru Bafarawa. Um, the senator who also returned, who is coming back to the Senate now, um, who is also a former governor, Wamaku, uh, mm -hmm. and, and the rest of them. I, and even uh, the, the former minister of uh, um, water resources, uh, Shagar. Uh, 
um, the Shagari, I've forgotten his first name now. But what, what is important is that the, the big players in, in, that, in that state have divided themselves into these two dominant parties, and there seems to be a change of battle in a sense. You, you finish, you come in, and, and I take it. But that's what it is for me from Sokoto. That's where I'm, I'm really looking at, and it sticks out very well for me as, as something to study for that. Okay. Uh, well, I, I know that there will still be more states uh, that we're expecting that might also uh, bring in more intrigues, Ogun, or maybe Ogun not. State was an epic. Ogun State. In terms of. In terms of the the, the margin. The margin. margin. I see. <laughs> so, I see. So Ogun State was it for you? Exactly, because uh, if you look at uh, the the margin when the governor was elected the other time, and the margin now, it really shows that uh, he probably fought the, the political battle. Of, of his life, and, and I just hope that uh, the, there wouldn't be some, you know, judicial, you know, contest or that result. You know, politicians get encouraged when they are looking at the margin, and then they're looking at can we establish that there was a problem here or there. And we also saw some element of, you know, regional, you know, politics in the performance of the candidates. You know, the PDP candidate having very strong uh, showing in the eastern part of, of the state and then you know the governor so we're looking at a margin of 10,000 really and maybe that is also informing the kind of thing we're seeing in uh, Adamawa and you know other you know places okay. where people realize that in fact uh, you know 1,000 2,000 could make a lot of difference remember Oshun election too you know we have some of these you know close you know margins so when you look at Ogo State again you can then ask yourself wasn't that a form of you know referendum in terms mm. of how you know the people you know perceive that otherwise why was it that that close that close Foreseen although we also know too house. that there are you know divergent you know political interests uh, with uh, the, the suspicion or the allegation that maybe the former governor is not really you know with the current you know governor or kind of interest you know playing themselves but really if you I mean, been, his if campaign. You've been that, you're, you're talking about Senator Amosun, right? Yes, yes. I mean, his campaign. Even the previous election. Even the previous his campaign <laughs> for. I mean, another candidate, and this one is shown up at yeah, so, uh, the campaign grounds. So, so right? State too, is, you know, is quite uh, you know interesting in the way the political history of that state, you know, has shaped. It started with AD yeah. in 1999 <laughs> with <laughs> our senior colleague as governor, Oshoba. and then Oshego Shoba. Then later on, he went to PDP. You had you know Benga Daniel. Who is now a senator on the platform of APC? The beauty Honestly. of Nigerian politics. Uh, Gentlemen, let's the take beauty, a breather. The beauty uh, of this election, right. uh, it looks like no margin is safe. Wide or, Nothing. or slim? No margin is safe. Just, no, no margin. No, well, let's take, let's, let's take a away. quick breather. I mean, we'll, we'll still come back to it. Quite a lot of uh, talking points, and we're still expecting results uh, from some states. But, I mean, we've, we've gotten acceptance speeches uh, from uh, Governor of Lagos State. But let's take you to Katsina State, uh, where the governor-elect <laughs> has been speaking. And then we'll take the news at the top of the hour. I'll be back with more conversation. Stay with us. As winners of the 2023 gubernatorial election, we believe it is now time to give nothing less than our best as a government. As your governor, I will be humble in my dispensation, diligent in my execution, and sincere in my action. I want to extend my deep gratitude to everyone who voted for me and my party APC in the election. I also want to thank everyone who participated in our democratic process.
vision for the people of Katsina State is to, is to build a better future for everyone. And I understand now more than ever that a better future is possible for all. I have toured every part of our dear state, seen first-hand challenges in our communities. My goal as governor is to ensure that government creates the right environment to overcome all the challenges. The team I will form will be the, the team I will form will be diverse, inclusive, and based on merit. Our administration will go about making government work for the people. And I assure you that I will be personally responsible for ensuring our strategic policy are aligned with the realities of our time and implemented transparently and effectively. The security of our dear state will be of paramount importance to me. And we will proactively go after all banditry and criminal elements in our state. To be very clear, our government will take every possible measures to make every part of our state safe. Inshallah, we will do it. We will boost the economy, educate our children, help the vulnerable, and provide high levels of public service. Visionary leadership entails very precise, attainable goals. And I believe I can lead a government that can deliver for the people of Katsina State. Our youth are our future. And they will become teachers, doctors, engineers, technicians, entrepreneurs, and leaders same day. My commitment to the youth of Katsina State will be unveiled throughout my administration. The youth will be the backbone of our economic growth and we will support you with all the resources available to the government to actualize our dreams. I want to conclude by seeking Allah's help in our government. I also seek the help of every one of you as we embark on our future building project. I'm driven by sincerity of purpose and complete dedication to accomplishing our objectives to make Kazana State better.